And we also then have an interesting notion put forward uh, by a writer called Nilifer Merchant, who has just published a book. And uh, she wrote a, a series of very, very thought-provoking posts uh, on the Harvard Business Review blog network, introducing this notion of the social era. And note, it's, a, it's one word with caps in the middle and a hashtag. And so that is common currency now. It's very discoverable, that term. Interesting use of it. But the interesting thing was this quote that I lifted out of her book that struck me as exactly, that's exactly what we need to be paying attention to. Uh, social is a phenomenon uh, that allows us to, re to redefine our organizations to be inherently more fast, fluid, and flexible by its very design, not by doing a little bit more or by doing a few things a little bit faster. We can't tweak our way to the future. And that is the, the issue, I believe, that what I'm seeing most people doing is that. It's tweaking. It has to be far more fundamental than that. If you are to enable your whole organization, the people in particular, to be ready for that kinetic consumer because the kinetic consumer thinks like that. The Altimeter Group, a research firm in Silicon Valley, published this report a year ago uh, that addressed this topic from a crisis perspective. But this variation, if you've seen Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you'll recognize this. This is the hierarchy of needs for organizational readiness for that connected consumer. I don't know any organization that is in the top element of the pyramid, the enlightenment. I don't know any organization like that. And indeed, Altimeter state, more recently, they don't know anyone either. So maybe that's aspirational, I don't know. I know lots at the foundation. But I equally know more who are not even at that stage. They've got bits of it in place, but not all of it. Uh, you're talking about things like fundamentals, policies, guidance to employees on how to behave online, inside the organization and outside. The environment that the organization creates for them, the responsibility of the employer to address issues, the FUD factor, fear, uncertainty, and doubt that people have about being online and talking about the company, all the secrets might go out the door, viruses, all that kind of stuff have to be addressed. You might or might not be surprised how many do not address those. So there's a lot of work to be done. In my view, it's a leadership issue in organizations. This is not for the marketing or the communications folk primarily. They're part of the solution finding, of course, but it requires leadership. I mentioned social era. No doubt you've seen these words. Social media, of course. Social business has been floating about over the last year as a kind of a handle to slap on to social media and a kind of strategic perspective. Social enterprise, I find a more interesting description. So this is all to do with, it's obvious from the slide, the DNA strand that's there. Uh, this kind of neat way of describing how something needs to, be, to permeate the organization, how it needs to be embedded in the culture. So that is part of the DNA. What is that? We can define it in many different ways, but this is to do with fundamental grasping in the organization to enable people to do things that follow, meet, help the organization achieve its business objectives in ways that are new, are different. And new, different change scares a lot of people. So part of my job, uh, I find talking to people, is to help them understand those things. The fear goes away. Once you understand the reality, you can deal with it more effectively. So education, awareness raising is quite key to this. But again, this is a leadership issue. It's for the C-suite to be addressing these matters. And then on that same vein, what we see, the question I get asked, well, we can, we're doing a bit of social media. You know, okay, so we'll do this and that'll be it, won't it? No, it won't, because that's simply layering it. Can you put a layer on top of your foundation? No, of course you can't. It will not succeed. You have to look at the foundation, have a, a stable foundation. And that means rethinking, in many ways, the organization, how you present yourself to your connected consumer. How do you do that? And how does that individual see you? Are you truly ready? Liken it to the customer service call center, that you have to drill down to those menus. Typically, it's not a nice experience. Contrast that with what you're seeing emerging. Again, this is tinkering. Is those folks and those companies with call centers like that are on Twitter or on Facebook. And often you get a better result through Twitter than if you go to the call center. 
I've had a direct experience of that myself in the last few days, that it works. That's not how it should be. That's tinkering. You need to address the core. Uh, easy to say, of course. Uh, a lot of it is legacy structures and organizations that are brought together requires a lot of shifting. Technologies need to change, structures need to change, but it has to be tackled, otherwise you won't be ready. So it's all to do with calculating risk. Very simple way to look at it, I believe. Uh, the first part is recognizing the landscape, those shifts that, that uh, I mentioned earlier, that you will see looking at that report, for instance, on convergence, what you experience in your own organizations. There is change afoot, uh, as Deloitte said in their report, huge, it's underway. It can't be turned back, the gene is out of the bottle, all that, it's going on, you have to deal with it. It's happening at a society level, in people's behaviors. It's happening in your landscape. may look different to your competitors or indeed someone you know in a different industry entirely. Uh, but that connected consumer uh, is talking about you, wants to buy from you, uh, will share opinions with many other people, whether it's an individual shopper or a purchaser in a big corporation because it's people you're talking about and they all have access to the same tools and channels. It's about seeding control. Uh, and this was, these are quotes from uh, an interview that... Uh, I had with Silicon Republic uh, back in August before this. That was published, in the, I think, in the Irish Independent. Uh, some interesting points about giving up control. It's a mantra the public relations profession talks about a lot. I've done the same. It tends to scare people when you say it like that. But now I think people know more about what's going on to recognize that if you give up control, meaning that the free flow of ideas, information, uh, and connections between people without the restrictive ways we've done it in the past, uh, produce benefits. Talk to companies who do that and they will tell you there are benefits, but it's a calculated risk. You need to weigh up the pros and the cons. Indeed, for some organizations, it's not good to do that. Think of the defense industry, regulatory uh, issues for some, although it shouldn't prevent you considering it. The point is you need to understand that landscape. You need to make a deal with your employees. You literally do. Make an agreement with them. If we do this, you can do that. In return, we want this from you. And too few do that. I mean, genuinely do that. So it's helping them understand. Uh, it is helping you understand what your employees want to do. In a sense, it's coming back to that issue of trust. Do you trust your employees? If you've seen reports such as Edelman's Trust Barometer, they publish every year, the new one's coming out in January. The last one talked about uh, trust in leaderships in organizations and in politics is the lowest it's been in almost a decade by individual people. Who do people trust? People like us, people like you and me. How does that fit into the equation? You have to find people to fulfill those roles. But it is all to do with eliminating the FUD. Be where your customers are and you'll say, yeah, we are, but you need to be there on their terms, not on yours. And that is how you build genuine connections with those customers. Identifying influences is part of that new landscape in ways that are different to the old media relations and the old legacy PR activities, marketing activities of the past. This is talking about genuine, effective connections, and that is being where they are on their terms. So those forums uh, on Twitter, and again, tools and channels, but being visible where they happen to be. Know who your fans and your enemies are, your advocates and your detractors. You might think you do, but think now about the way influence works online on the social web. If you're not aware of that, you need to get up to speed very quickly. You talk about niches. It's not about the numbers. It's not about so-and-so has got a million or, or 100,000 circulation in a newspaper or the broadcast audience is X. Think about Lady Gaga, who has 25 million followers on Twitter. That's a broadcast community. So she goes to a restaurant and says, I had a great steak at so-and-so's restaurant in Manhattan yesterday. That restaurant's probably overwhelmed the next day with all those 25 million people. But that's part of the landscape, too. That competes with broadcast television. I'm not talking about quality of content, just the sheer scale of it. And it's instantly connectable. So that is the landscape. And, of course, you need to listen. And, indeed, that probably should have been the first bullet. You need to listen first. Uh, constant listening. That's what you use social channels mostly for, is listening to what people are saying about the things that interest you. So... I conclude by saying you need to make these changes. You need to enable the framework that lets your people excel 
in ways that support your business, in ways that are natural, that gives them confidence to represent your organization. There are other elements to this too, in terms of binding those people to your community, which is your organization. Definitions are shifting. How we describe things are moving in tune with how our employees use these terms. So a lot of outside influences are coming to the workplace. Most workplaces are rigid and not shifting with these things. The ones that think they are, in my opinion, are primarily tweaking. So I quote these words from uh, someone I pay a lot of attention to over the years, Esther Dyson, a name you may be familiar with, who has this terrific, very simple phrase, always make new mistakes. So experiment and don't make the same mistakes, make new mistakes. Thank you. <laughs>